last week on In the Closet, we talked to Mike Eastwood about his wardrobe and he brought up this really interesting issue about disposable razors. Have a watch. Hey, the other thing you were talking about um, off camera, Mike was telling me about his um, shaving ritual. Yeah. Because Mike, Mike's um, incredible in terms of his consideration of the environment. You were saying last year you printed six pieces of paper and one was accidental. Uh, yeah, I think at the moment I'm doing, I think I did three this month. Um, that's for work and none personally. I mean, you know, we buy paper products. But it's that interesting thing where you can make a choice and then there are hidden environmental benefits. So going back to the shaving one. So I got my grandfather's cutthroat razors. I should put down them for a, get them out of the bathroom for a shot. Uh, I only shaved once a week, clearly, and it wasn't today. Um, <laughs> I got my grandfather's razors restored in London and they were cutthroat razors. It's the sharpest blade in the house. You can hold hair and it will cut the hair just by passing over it. Are they the ones that you see, like the, the sharpening on the this street? So every day, I, every time I shave, I strop 50 times. Why, why leather? Um, it, all it's doing is aligning the edge. It's not actually sharpening, it's not taking any metal away, it's just ah. moving everything because it's super delicate. And so as you shave, it just gets little imperfections. Oh, um, I always wonder, because I thought that's weird. You think a leather would blunt a... There's a very distinct technique, which takes a while to get used to, not as long as holding the sharpest object in the house to your face. <laughs> um, but, so the, I enjoy the ceremony. I only do it once a week, because it takes more than half an hour. Um, but there's a ritual there, you slow down, it's slow fashion, it's you slow down, you take your time, slow food's probably a better analogy, um, but I prefer to eat food than talk about it. Um, and once you have a shave, you get a much better shave, and there's, the, there's no waste, you use some soap, which lasts, I probably go through a pottle of soap a year, I've got a fibre brush, which is animal fibre, but I've had that for more than five years and it will last indefinitely. No plastic disposable razors, no no manufacturer giving you plastic within plastic within plastic for something which is going to last one shave. And if you let it grow and then try and shave, you're going to throw that razor away. Mm. Whereas, I mean, even with a full beard, I can have a shave with a cutthroat razor and it's fine, you just, just drop it again. And so the that's a random way of saying that it's actually ended up as an environmental benefit um, through just looking at the processes and the way I shave. It's interesting because as a woman, it wasn't even it wasn't even something I'd ever ever think about. Yeah. yeah, but when you think of all the men shaving every day, wonder what that percentage is of just people using disposable razors. Because you've got the cutthroat, but then you've also got the there's kind of electric. safety, there's electric, there's, um, there's a new one I've just seen in the States which has got a, a metal handle that sort of pivots on your face, so much easier to use. And the blade clips in, mm. so the only disposable element is a small piece of metal rather than you think of all the plastic moulded around a metal in a plastic case in a plastic thing on a shelf. Then put in a plastic bag. So, yeah, for me, cutting out those processes, those extra redundant ingredients is just. And yeah. for disposable, what you think of the blade of your grandfather's um, razor compared to the metal of those disposable razors? Yeah, and this is beautiful Italian blade. So, my grandfather was a shearer. So, the. Uh, the um, the, rest, the guy that did the restoration said it had a frown and it had been stropped in a way that it had the blade blade had a shape like that, had a frown, which I thought was a really wow. comical description. So he flattened it and straightened it. I'll have to find it so you can have a have a go. So having a frown, did he did he strop it from 
I, th I assume it's from stropping rigorously mm. and using it for it's probably 60, 70 years old. I don't know. Wow. Yeah. So it could do several lifetimes. Yeah. And yeah, maybe if I shaved a bit more, I'd make more impact. But uh, yeah, I don't see You're going for the low to... impact, <laughs> environmentally friendly look. It's just laziness. <laughs> Yeah, um, and that fashion thing again, it's like, um, if everybody else is growing a beard, then I'm going to shave more often. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Can't, yeah, can't follow the herd. Yeah. Interesting, yeah. gosh. <coughs> and when you think about those volumes, oh, it almost hurts your head to think I about. Just, one one minuscule piece of the puzzle multiplied by millions of people. Yeah. It just, yeah, it just... But you'd think if we piled Wellington's disposable razors in a pile, yeah. and went, okay, that's every year, and there's no end in sight for that. Oh my god. Um, maybe they'll have some magical razor thing, but yeah. yeah. Maybe, I don't know, but it's just one of those choices where I came to it from a convoluted path, but I feel very happy going that. I don't go down that aisle anymore. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's going to give me fresh eyes every time I go past it now. It's like, mm. Mm. Yeah. yeah. It's a strange, it's a strange process scraping the hair off your face with a razor anyway, but that's another story. I, I wouldn't know. My legs, however, I do know. <laughs> <laughs> so this is my grandfather's razor, which I had restored in in London. He was a shearer in New Zealand, um, Joe Brebner. So this, um, it's like a cardboard package held together with vintage shearing um, band-aid material. And the blade itself is just exquisite. So we've got an ivory handle there, inlaid metal. Now unfortunately the gold came off when they restored it. They warned me it would. Um, but for me, I'd rather have a functional object that I can use once a week. And it's just the, the sense of design with one single piece of metal, some pins and some um, little spaces there, which make it lock, it clicks, clicks closed. Uh, they probably would have called that safety. Um, the blade, even after five years of using it, I strop it every day. Every time I shave, it's still the sharpest object in the house. Um, and it's just such a pleasure to use. Yeah. We don't know the global data about how many disposable razors are used every year, but they estimate in the US it's about two billion. So, Knowing that, should we be looking at banning them like we have with um, beauty products that have microbeads in them or single-use plastic bags? It's food for thought and we'd love to know what you think. <laughs>